Good morning. Let's confess the Word of God together in faith. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is Lord over this nation. Jesus is Lord over all of our elections in Jesus' name. And He causes the righteous to inherit the land. He lifts up the righteous above the wicked in Jesus' name. Jesus is Lord over my life and over all in the name of Jesus. Today, I have the strength of the Lord. I have His might. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. I have His will. I have my Father's determination. I have my Father's purpose in me in Jesus' name. I have inherited my Father's divine nature of strength. Strength in my might, strength in my mind, strength in my might, strength in my spirit, strength in my body, strength in every area of my life, strength in my uh, finances. Actually, I call that wealth and riches. He is my strength. Praise God. That's a good confession. And don't ever get tired of making confessions because how long does it take to speak what the Word says? And when you speak the Word, then what happens is um, God brings it to pass. And to begin with, Christianity was called the Great Confession. So as the Holy Spirit brings to us the things to say, then acknowledge that, confess that, and it becomes a reality in your life. So don't ever get tired of making confessions. We should be doing that really all day long. So uh, Mark eleven twenty four, that is the prayer of petition, the prayer of faith. That is the way that we receive everything from our Father. And it says, what things soever you desire when you pray, Believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. So we go in knowing what we're asking for. We go in confidently, boldly, in the name of Jesus. But we also go in with a determination in our will that, yes, we are going to receive this. I gave you some scriptures yesterday one was uh, in Ephesians, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. But um, there are two or three more to give you today. And then um, after that, we'll move on. But the Lord quickened this to me to share with you. Proverbs 3.26 says, For the Lord shall be your confidence and shall keep your foot from being taken. Now, that is a good confession. Say, the Lord is my confidence. The Lord is my assurance and keeps my foot from being taken. You know, in the world, you hear parents say to children, you just need have, to have confidence in yourself. You need to have self-confidence. No, that is wrong thinking. Nowhere in the Word does the Word say, does God say to have self-confidence? Actually, it says quite the opposite, that we have no confidence in the flesh because we are new creatures in Christ Jesus. So as you rear your children, don't use those terms of you just need to have some self-confidence or you just need to have confidence in yourself. No, our confidence is of the Lord. And so we say, for the Lord is our confidence and keeps our foot from being taken. And David even said, it's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in princes. It's better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. He, all through the Psalms, let it be known that his confidence was not in horses. His confidence was not in man. His confidence was not even in himself. His confidence was in the Lord his God. So uh, adjust your thinking in that and confess the Lord is your confidence. Then um, here's another one 
in 1 John 4, 17, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, boldness, confidence, assurance, because, are you ready for this? As he is, so are we in this world. He is, and as he is, so are you and I in this world. That is a great confession. You know, Jesus boldly confessed, I and my Father are one. So let's say that. I and my Father are one. Now let's say this. As he is, so am I in this world. And then Ephesians 3, 11, According to the eternal purpose which he purposed in Christ Jesus our Lord, in whom we have boldness and access with confidence by the faith of him. It's all about what Jesus gave us. You know, I've heard uh, from time to time, somebody will say that the Lord said that I have faith in you. I believe in you. I don't find that anywhere in the word. He says to have faith in God. He says to have faith in his word and to believe that those things that you say come to pass. But I don't find anywhere where he says that he has faith in you or believes in you. He believes in his own word and he believes in what he says comes to pass. In Job 22, 29, listen to this. When men are cast down, then shalt thou say, there is lifting up, and he will save the humble person. So rather than being cast down on the inside of you or in your mind, you say, no, lifting up, lifting up. I am lifted up. I've said that many times when I would feel like being, I was, be, I was cast down or feel like I had no confidence. Then I remembered this and said, no, lifting up. And as soon as you say that, you are lifted up. And the truth is, is we are lifted up far above all principality and power and might in every name that is named. Then in Jude 1, you're going to love this. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. It's him that keeps us from falling, from becoming weak, from becoming feeble on the inside because he is our strength. Okay, now that we know that, let's acknowledge that again. The Lord is my strength. He is the strength of my will. I have his strong will in Jesus' name. I am lifted up in my spirit and in my mind in the name of Jesus. I am strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. I have his determination. I have my father's perseverance. I have my father's intensity to receive in Jesus' name. Now, we're going to go back to Mark eleven twenty four, 24, where he said, What things soever you desire, when you pray, and we've um, been very thorough with that, when you pray, the next part of that prayer is, and this, I just love this. I meditate on this quite a bit. Believe you receive them and you shall have them. Believe you receive them, and then you shall have them. So first, we have to know what we desire, be very, very specific with it, and uh, then when you go into the throne room, go in with the intensity, the will of God, the expectation of believing that you will get it right away and not willing to accept anything less. You go in confidently. You go in uh, boldly. You go in 
in the name of Jesus. And then it, and you ask. So when you pray, that's, you ask. You simply ask for what you desire. And then he says, so now you've asked your father, you've gone in, in the name of Jesus, you've got your list, and you know what? Your list can be this long. It can be this long. It doesn't matter. Every day it can be that long. So you go in with your list of everything you desire, house paid in full, check, cars paid in full, new cars, new house, um, my children hunger and thirst after the word of God, my children are mighty on the face of this earth, our country is uh, turned back to God, Jesus is Lord over our country, and our country, uh, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, and God is the Lord over this nation in Jesus' name. So you can have a long list, but it doesn't matter. You Then you ask, and then, this is a very important part. Each part is important, but this is something that the Lord corrected me on many years ago now. And so I'm going to share it with you. He said, believe you receive. Say that. Believe I receive. Say it again. I believe I receive. And we talked quite a bit about um, the word believe in verse 23, where he says, have the faith of God. For verily I say unto you, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he saith shall come to pass. Then he shall have whatsoever he saith. Well, now in the prayer of faith, which is right after that, he says, believe you receive them. So I was in a, a faith convention, so grateful, so grateful for it. Kenneth Hagin, Fred Price, Kenneth Copeland, Charles Capps, uh, Kenneth Hagin Jr., each one of them. Charles, let's see, I said Charles Capps. And um, I, my, my heart, when Fred Price said, let's turn to Mark 11, 23, and 24, my spirit man leaped, and I thought, oh, I want to hear some more of this. You know, you can never get all the revelation out of one verse. Because the Word of God is God, and it is His very own life and His very own wisdom. So I sat there, and my, my mind and my heart was set to receive what He was saying. And so He went to this verse, Mark eleven twenty four, and He said, How many of you believe you are here? And most everybody in there raised their hand. Truthfully, I didn't know whether to or not. And so then he said, that's why we have to keep teaching this. You ought to know that you are here. You believe for something you don't have. And so then he got to uh, the end of the verse where it says, and you shall have them. And he said, what are you going to have? And people said, what things soever you desire. And that was the answer of what most people said. And he said, it does not say that. And so he went back over it and he said, what things soever you desire, when you pray, believe that you receive them and you shall have them. And he said, you believe, you're only going to have the things that you believe you receive. He said, you may desire a lot of things, but he said, you're only going to have those things that when you pray, you believe you receive them. He said, it does not say to know that you receive them. And he said, you hear a lot of people say when they 
uh, have prayed. They said, oh, I just know God heard me. I just know I have it. He said, it does not say that. It says to believe you have it. Believe you receive it. He said, it does not say to wish you receive it, to hope you receive it. He said, it, the word says, the Holy Spirit says, Jesus said to us, believe you receive them and you shall have them. And when he said that, on the, it, that word just went into me of, oh, I see that. You're only going to have the things that you believe you receive when you pray, no matter what it is. So we'll look at this again tomorrow. But when you pray today, believe you receive the things that you're asking for. And then he said, you will have them. In other words, they will manifest. Well, remember all day, Jesus is Lord. You have his strength, his might, his perseverance, his willfulness, his intensity, and you have the answers to your prayers now in Jesus' name.